Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful tonight that we have hope, that in spite of the darkness that surrounds us in the world, that your word is sure and certain and gives us that confidence that your son Jesus came to secure our eternal future in heaven with you. Continue to come to us, to abide with us as our Lord, our Emmanuel. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, if you've ever seen the movie Cliffhanger starring Sylvester Stallone, the opening scene stars a rock climbing rescue mission. There's two climbers who are stranded on the top of a cliff, and so Stallone climbs the cliff to them and waits for the rescue helicopter to swoop in. As it does, it swings the cable to Stallone, and he promptly drives that into the cliff and then talks to these two stranded climbers to say, I'm going to put this harness on you, and all you need to do is hand over hand make your way to the helicopter and safety. Hope is here for you. Well, the first climber makes it safely to the helicopter, but then it's time for his girlfriend to go. And she puts the harness on, and she makes her way hand over hand across the cable toward the helicopter, when suddenly she looks down thousands of feet below her, and she gets scared, and she takes her hands off of the cable And the harness, rather than holding her in place, there's a malfunction. And so she is dangling there, barely hanging on, as Stallone now has to make his way out across the cable to her. And just as he reaches her, the harness breaks. And she reaches her hand up, and he grabs a hold of her. And there's this moment where everything hangs in the balance. And she looks down, and she looks in his eyes, and she says, I don't want to die. Have you ever had one of those cliffhanger moments? Maybe not while you're out rock climbing, but one of those moments where your life hangs in the balance, and you're unsure of what the future holds. You find yourself hanging by a thread, and you're at the end of your rope. And you're dangling there, holding on to some fragment of hope. Maybe that's where you are this Christmas. Because it's been a rough year for a lot of people. And maybe it's in a relationship, maybe it's in your marriage, and you are barely holding on. Things could be over tomorrow. Or maybe it's your mental health. And it's been a tough year, and COVID hasn't made it any easier. Or maybe it's a job that's been difficult for you. Or maybe you've lost a job, and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to find a job in the future. Or maybe it's your finances, and you're in this place, you're trying to put on a brave front, you're trying to hold it together, but you look at your checkbook, and you're slowly watching it dwindle away to nothing. We all find ourselves in those places, in those moments where we are barely holding on to hope. Tonight, I want you to know that hope is here. Hope is here in Jesus. Hope is here for you. But as we talk about hope, maybe we should define what it is and in turn what it isn't. Because we tend to use that word frequently. Like, I hope the weather cooperates, or I hope this COVID vaccine can get disseminated and and can do its thing, and, and life can begin to go back toward normal in the year ahead. I hope, I hope, I hope. But when we use that phrase, essentially what it amounts to is wishful thinking. Like, there's no guarantees. It's more of a, gee, you know, it would be nice if this actually happened, but I'm not sure that it's going to. The hope that I have for you tonight is not wishful thinking. It is a sure and certain hope that is rooted in God's word. You know, when the Old Testament talks about hope, 
It uses the Hebrew word kava. And the word kava means to wait and to anticipate a future reality in the midst of, of your present problems. Now, we might hear that word and it remains rather abstract, but for the ancient Hebrew people, their language often spoke with word pictures. And so it wasn't just a word, it was a word that emitted a picture. And the picture was that of a rope. A rope that God was letting down to his people that they could hold on to, that they could anchor themselves to in the midst of the problems that they faced and know that God was going to see them through that. God was tossing them a rope of hope. And I want you to know tonight that God is doing the same thing for you. He is tossing you a rope of hope. Now, when you think about a rope, I think of a strong rope that has various threads that are woven together with each other. And so as we think about what it means for us to hold on to hope in our lives, there are three different strands that are woven together that give us that strong, that certain hope. Number one is the person of God. Number two is the past deeds of God. And number three is the future promises of God. First of all, there's the person of God. Throughout Scripture, God describes himself to us as a God that we can put our hope in, that we can put our confidence in, a God who loves us, a God who cares for us, a God who is strong and mighty to save. Some of you have seen the movie Cliffhanger. You know what Sylvester Stallone looks like. You know if there's a guy that you want to swoop in and rescue you, it's a strong man like Sylvester Stallone. But he is nothing compared to the strength of who our God is. Our God is mighty to save. And we can see that as we look at the past deeds of God. You can look throughout scripture and you can see story after story of God swooping in and extending his hand and rescuing people and giving them hope. You can see his strong hands as it parts the waters of the Red Sea and God's people are led through it to safety and the promised land. You can see it as that hand goes before God's people into battle and they're able to defeat armies that are far stronger and far bigger than they are. You can see it as that hand is extended on the head of man after man who serves faithfully as king over God's people and points them forward to a promise of a Messiah who one day will come and give them hope. And ultimately you see that in the hand of a little baby boy that extends from the womb and enters into this world. And those hands offer to you and I hope. Those hands that are extended and reach out and touch people and perform miracles. Those hands that are raised to hush the crowds, to calm the seas. Those hands that reach out to embrace people and hold them close. Those hands ultimately that are extended upon a cross and choose to suffer and die. And you might pause the story there and you might say, where's the hope? The hope comes in Jesus saying, whatever sin you struggle with, whatever present problem you have, I'm choosing to take that into my body and to suffer and die on the cross. I'm choosing to let sin, death, and Satan do their worst to me so that three days later, aha, I'm back from the dead. And I'm demonstrating my strength for you. And because of that, we can look forward to the future promises that God makes to us. In spite of the problems that we face in our lives, God is consistently reminding his people in places like Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Words like Paul says in in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 10, where he says that the Lord has delivered me from every evil peril and I believe that he will deliver me in the future. We hold on to him. We have this sure and certain hope. And so wherever you're at in your life right now, whatever your present problems are, big or small, it doesn't matter. We all have them. We're able to take those present problems and weave them together with the person of God, the past deeds of God, and the future promises of God. 
And that's exactly what the writer of the book of Hebrews does for us. Now, you might not think of Hebrews as your typical text to celebrate Christmas, but let's be honest, this hasn't been your typical year, so why would I go to a typical Christmas text with you? But what the writer of the book of Hebrews does is he takes all of those Old Testament promises, all of those things that people have been waiting on, putting their hope in, and he shows how it is ultimately fulfilled in Jesus. And so he says these words in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 18 through 20. The promises of God give us strength to hold on to the hope that we have been given. We have this hope as an anchor for our souls. It is sure and it is strong. It enters the inner sanctuary of the heavens where Jesus the forerunner has gone. The image here that the author of the book of Hebrews uses is of a very particular type of rope. It's of an anchor. In fact, the anchor is the dominant image that is used to describe the hope that people have, that the early Christians had. And so you could go into catacombs, places where they buried their dead, but places where they also worshipped because of the persecution that they were experiencing in their lives. And into the walls of these catacombs, as you can see in the next picture here, you can see the anchor that has been inscribed. It's that anchor that gave them hope. Because what does an anchor do? An anchor is let down into the choppy waters in order to give you stability in the midst of the storm, in order to prevent you from drifting into more dangerous waters. And this is what Jesus does for us. Jesus says, anchor yourself to me in the midst of the storm that you find yourself in throughout life. I will keep you firm in the faith. We'll get through this together. And there's a very specific word that's used to describe who Jesus is. It says that he is the forerunner. And the image here that's being described in the book of Hebrews is that of when a ship was nearing a harbor and it was the midst of a storm and the waters were choppy so that that ship couldn't make its way safely into the harbor, they would take the anchor and place it in a little boat called the forerunner. And that boat would make its way through the breakers into the harbor, and it would anchor itself there until the storm had passed. This is what Jesus has done for us. He has gone before us through the choppy waters, through the struggles and the sins that beset us in life, through his death on the cross and resurrection, and he has taken that anchor and he has firmly placed it in the heavens. And when the storm passes, he will bring us there to be with him. Now, when you think about an anchor, typically you think of what direction? You think of going down. But as the anchor is described here in Hebrews chapter 6, it's actually an anchor that is up. It says up in the heavens, in the inner sanctuary, the place where God dwells. And so I think, for me, this emits a very different image of an anchor. It's much more like an anchor that's used in rock climbing. Because in rock climbing, there is someone who is the forerunner. There is someone who scales the cliff ahead of you. And as they go, they are slowly anchoring different points. So that as you follow, even if you slip, you will be kept firm. This is what Jesus has done for us. He has gone before. He has scaled the cliff. He has ascended into heaven. And now, he says, in me, you have hope. And I want you to hear that tonight. I want you to hear Jesus saying to you, whatever you find yourself up against in life, I've got you. I've got you in my strong arms that are mighty to save. I've got you. I'm not letting go. It was about a month ago when COVID really hit hard in our community. And it was a particular week where Every day I was having multiple conversations with members of our congregation who had come down with COVID, who had been hospitalized, or who had loved ones who were in that difficult place. And I remember saying to many of them these words, hang in there and hang on to Jesus because he's hanging on to you. This is what I want you to hear tonight. Hang in there and hang on to Jesus because he's hanging on to you. Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, I've not already obtained all of these things, but I press on 
to take a hold of that for which Jesus Christ already took a hold of me. I want you to know tonight that Jesus is not up in the heavens and simply dangling a rope to you and says, okay, you can do it. He's actually rappelled down that rope to you and he is here and his strong arms are around you and with you in whatever season of life you find yourself and he's offering you hope. He's saying, we will get through this together. What I want you to do as we close our time together is for those of you who are sitting in the middle of your pews, I want you to look as there's a little piece of string that we position there. I want to invite each of you to take one of these pieces of string, one of these little ropes, and hold on to it at this time. It's a very simple rope with, with a variety of strands that have been woven together. Strands that remind us that in the midst of our present problems, We can put our hope in the person of God, the past deeds of God, and the future promises of God. God is here for you tonight. Jesus is here for you this Christmas. He is an anchor for your soul. He is a rope that you can put your hope in. Hope is here. His name is Jesus. Amen.